morning, campers. Day 7, Friday the 20th. Apparently, that's what my phone just said when I turned it on. We don't really have concept of days or dates or anything like that, but we know it's day 7. And uh, per the usual, not an uneventful night. Uh, there were absolutely torrential rainfall. Basically, as soon as we went to sleep, right till about 5.30 this morning, um, you can see there's a, one dry spot. That's where we had the tarp. Because uh, it didn't rain too sideways. But you can see that the landscape was even changed with all the rain uh, that we had. And it actually ripped our poor tarp. It built up. We heard the, the, the uh, ropes against the trees with the rain pelting on it. They were sliding down because they're birch trees and there's nothing for them to really... The ropes can't grab anything because they're smooth. So yeah, so that was fun. Ripped our tarp. We only have one more night with it before we can get home and repair it. But uh, yeah, so now everything around us is soaked again. And I was going to check out down that road to see if that road does in fact lead to another corner of this river, which I'm really, really hoping it does. But because we live in Alder Hell, um, even the road is actually choked off. You can't walk through. I've got to actually cut on a road through these alders just in order to see if we can actually portage to that end and put in around this godforsaken log jam. But we're going to have some coffee first. We're going to settle ourselves. We're going to hope that it clears this morning, at least that it doesn't rain anymore because that was ridiculous. Um, and yeah, we're just going to try to get some progress under our belts, get off this river, and get into the lake travel again. And... Um, we were talking last night, we're probably going to stay on Island Lake if we can make it that far and save the three kilometer portage into Samo for for Saturday and then just go straight out and straight home from there after changing the tire on Trixie. Anyway, we've got a lot of interesting stuff still left, I'm sure. Stick with us, gang. Day seven up to come. So friends, this is the road. Um, where we camped on, down about 150 meters uh, through uh, toward the west. And uh, it's pretty, as you can see, it's rather choked up, but still navigable with a canoe. And look at what happens. Oh, this is the river takes another bend right here toward the river. It looks like someone else has used this as a takeout slash put in. And that is a massive, massive bear poop holy jumping a couple of days old so we're safe but there you go there's our ticket back into forward progress gang hopefully this uh this is the last there's still <laughs> there's still log jam over there so even getting around that original one we would have had more to do hopefully that's the last of it here and we can uh, actually move on oh i am stoked 420 bro just kidding we don't do that just packing up camp and uh, the rain started again so that's real nice but at least we have just a short portage and then we're back on the river in the rain hopefully the rain only lasts long enough to make us cross and then uh, it'll go away but we're back on the river in a few short moments Okay, hey everyone, we were maybe 150 meters into the paddle, and we have portage number seven or eight. I want to say portage number eight. Um, it was pretty pushy with all the uh, extra water from the deluge last night. It was really, really pushy, so we didn't want to risk it. There were a couple of rocks that the water was just flowing right over, and we just didn't want to risk it. So. Once again, the logging road came in handy. We used that to get here. It was a really steep put in, but, uh, but we managed. Um, yeah, so onward and upward. Seems that's where all the currents are. Yeah. 
much prefer rapids to log jams because there's almost always a portage around rapids because they're kind of a permanent thing. But log jams, there's not really ever a portage around because they're they're not always there, right? So, yeah, well, the water is really, really high. I you came up a couple of inches last night just because of that stupid rainfall. stand on that big thick log to get over this. So forward. I don't know that these are all going to be able to support our weight. Yikers, okay, we just did, I don't even want to count the log jams, but like, so portage like 10 around log jam, impassable log jam. We've done about eight log jams that we passed over, but this is like impassable log jam number three. And that was a tough slog, but we did it. We went through that. It looks like, judging by mud footprints, it looks like we've had a visitor here in the last couple of weeks actually, who went through but didn't take out very many trees or alders or anything to get their canoe through. So I don't know if maybe they just dragged their canoe through. Or they didn't need anything overhead taken out. But anyway, um, we made it through. We muscled through it back on the river again. And um, we're hoping there's not too many more, if any more of those darn things. So we can't, we're on the river right, and there's no way to pass over it. So we have to go to river left, but the banks are really high. So we're gonna have to go hopefully over there before those friggin' alders. And just, we're gonna have to scramble up that bank because it looks not too bad up there. And then there's only a little patch here of alders to pass before we're back in the river. So wish us luck. for beaver slides to be able to pull in and out of these portages like oh my god these beans
it started to rain. There's thunder in the distance. We're hoping that it stays north of us, but uh, we're getting rained on. But this here is the confluence of the west of Inadong here, and we are just coming off of the Nishtagani. We're gonna head down to Gong Creek as it, the rain supremely intensifies, and we've conquered both rivers. Now we're trying to find shelter. Yeah. <laughs> Cher and I just finished the remarkably tough um, portage from basically one side of Gong Creek over the falls to the other side, the calm side of Gong Creek. And yeah, I, I remember it being tough and I remember thinking, oh, this isn't gonna be so bad when we have less weight. No, 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 it was just as bad. It was, that's a tough portage. And- um, Our bags are wet. Our bag, everything's We're wet. wet. <laughs> We're, we, we just got rained on for the last hour. And, oh, if, she, if you can hear, that's actually pretty loud rolling thunder that we don't want. I feel like we should just wait it out here. I don't think we should get on the water. And, Cher, you said you saw something. Something jumped out of a tree and ran. I don't know. Pretty quickly. It was tough to, yeah, tough to see what it was. I'm hoping it was just a raccoon or something. <laughs> or maybe like a little bush person. Anyway, we'll circle back. <laughs> so, I think Sherry thought this was a photo. Oh, I thought it was. <laughs> it isn't. So we're just kinda, <laughs> we're just kinda hunkered underneath this big beautiful cedar to try to stay a little bit dry. Um, Cause here we are, so it's about 2 p.m. So that's about four hours after we left. Uh, a little bit under four hours after we left our camp in the Nush. Um, I don't know what it is with this place, but it does not want us to leave, I think. It's like the Hotel California. Exactly. No matter how hard we're like, well, we don't care. I don't care if it's raining. We're going to make it through. A little bit of thunder doesn't really bother me as long as it's off in the distance and I'm not seeing lightning. And they, they know, like, so the place knows the only thing that's going to stop us is seeing lightning. Well, here you go. So this is stopping us from making progress. We're so close. We're like three portages from camp tonight, and then two porta uh, two portages then from the car. One of those portages is three kilometers long, but we're so close, and nature does not want us to get there. It wants to hold us here, and uh, that's kind of a bummer. But it is what it is. We can get through it. We'll just sit here under this cedar until the lightning stops. Try not to be hypothermic. Hypothermiac. Hypothermic. against time and racing against lightning and all those fun things. I don't remember when we last checked in, but I think it was just as we hunkered down at Gong Creek. Um, and yeah, so we, we hunkered down for about an hour and then we booted it as fast as I think anyone has ever gone across Gong Creek to the portage into Gong Lake. We hooped it there. We saw a really cool a snapping turtle that we normally would stop and take photos of and video and bother inordinately but we decided not to because it was raining on us and but we were trying to beat the lightning so we got out here to Gong Lake and we hightailed it as fast as we could to the nearest campsite passing along it, uh, along the way a beautiful little uh, cabin on the way and 
we were it was lightning out and we were just getting torrential rains and wind and it was just the worst possible time and then we get to this campsite and someone's already on it so we had to turn around and in order like literally our only safe thing to do was to actually come back to this cabin that is currently unoccupied and just sit on their deck and wait out the rain and, and thunder and try to dry off and try to get some warm food in us just in order to warm up and get back to and Sherry's batoning some wood for our little stick stove here it keeps falling off the deck but anyway so we're here for now we're just riding out the weather and uh, hopefully we can make it to another unoccupied campsite by the end of the day and we'll be good to go but boy we're having fun I'll tell ya Thank you. 